us pray before a message. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, Father, uh, please give us the word to hear and please give us the ears to hear and understand your word. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that you please, Lord, teach us in this day. Last days, what shall we do, Father, in the name of Jesus, to prepare for your coming and, and to be, to be spirit-filled? Father, in the name of Jesus, please, Lord, teach us, teach us your ways. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak through me, Holy Spirit, please. In Jesus Christ's mighty name I pray. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, uh, yeah, like some of the recent videos, I say Jesus' mighty name, and many people hear it as Jesus my name and have been accusing me but I'm just saying Jesus mighty name it when I say speak speak it fast like Jesus mighty name it sounds like Jesus my name but please don't uh, just, just disregard that please okay I'm, I'm not saying I don't want to be blaspheming that I'm Jesus or something because I'm not clearly I'm not Jesus Christ um, I'm just his disciple his follower amen uh, so let's Let's get into the recent events. Um, yeah, this gay marriage approval in America. What an abomination. Abomination to God and His people. It's really, really like United States is calling for destruction. Like, United States is like asking for destruction, you know, by, by allowing gays to get married. And I mean, like, the homosexual freedom is not enough that you need to get married. So, what's next? I don't know. Um, I don't know. You, 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 you name it. You name it. We're like the target, because God's judgment begins at His house. And you know, if if we claim to be a Christian nation, judgment will begin surely. You know, with the Christians first, and then, and then altogether the world. But uh, more, more importantly than this. Um, Recently, the minister, the cabinet minister of Israel, uh, I think his name is Ariel, he has proclaimed it's time that the temple, the third temple, should be rebuilt. And uh, these people do not just speak out for nothing. They have certain plans in mind. And it is true that the third temple location, which is by the uh, Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and I've spoken this before that, you know, the end will not come until you see the temple built and the Antichrist rising. Well, the, the Muslims, the Islams, they are expecting their Messiah, which is the Antichrist in Christian terms. They're expecting their Messiah to, to show up any moment. And that is the Antichrist. Allah is not... The God and now the Catholics are what trying to call God Jehovah God Jesus Christ what Allah it doesn't even make sense it's not even their language and they should never call the name of name God Jehovah or Jesus Christ Holy Spirit Allah because that is an abomination you will not go to heaven because you be believing the false God calling the false name and that is uh, that goes against one of the first commandments of the Bible, you know, do not have any other gods before me, because <laughs> if you are, and I'm sorry Muslims, if you're listening, you're deceived. Allah is a snake. Look at your writing. It's a snake with a crown on top that's stolen from uh, Adam uh, that fell, and it has a false, false prophet staff with that. The snake is a deceiver, and you're being deceived. Please, Allah is not the God. You're bowing down because um, Daniel bowed down three times a day, but you have to know that Quran was wrote, written in 600 AD after, after Jesus Christ. 600 years later, the Quran was merely a copy of the Bible. So I'm sorry, but Truth is truth. Why don't you do, do some research, you know, on the internet or, or in the history books or something. You'll know the truth. And truth will set you free. Allah is not. 
Oh God, it's, it's a false deception. It's a false deception. I don't care if you, you don't want to do anything with me. It's fine. The Lord protects me. Amen? And by the way, uh, yes, there is this Kamet Aisan that is coming also that they say it might be, it might be the biggest sign in the heavens. And uh, I looked at it, and interesting, the name I Sun, I thought about it, and there's some, um, some, some organization's abbreviation, S-I-S-O-N. Uh, but, you know, I think about it, it's like Jehovah God said, I am, right? His name is I am. And if, you know, if this is significant at all, it's, it's called I Sun. So, if the I Son is coming, then who would it be? This means the return of Jesus Christ. I believe these things are not just coincidence, because there's no such thing as coincidence in this world. Everything is directed. God is a sovereign God. That means He has full control of every single situation. Amen? So, these things cannot be just an accident. And I believe this signifies the coming of Jesus Christ. God is a sovereign God, yes. He has control of every single thing. And why is bad things happening to you? Because maybe you're not praying in the Spirit. You're not protected. You know, maybe you're sinning and without repentance, you have not repented of your anger, hatred, whatever issue that you have, I don't know. May the Lord reveal it to you. And may you do some uh, prayers of repentance, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal any kind of thing that is faulty with you. Because we're human. And we indeed have faults. Nobody's 100% perfect. That's what the Bible said. Nobody is 100% perfect except Jesus Christ, who is our God. Um, so, you know, if you don't think you have anything wrong, then that means you're already wrong. You have to even know that I have something wrong that I, am, I should be correcting according to the Word of God, which is the Bible, you know. I have to correct it according to the will of the Holy Spirit. So that's by praying. So if you lack these reading of the word nor praying, then you will fall into um, errors that you don't even know that you're in error. So, so yeah, the Lord will allow these things to kind of wake you up, give you a wake-up call. If you are truly son of God, children of God, sons and daughters of God, then God will truly chastise you. And by these bad things that are happening to you, you should get alarmed. Oh, I should go pray. Maybe it's lack of me lack of praying. Because there is a sin of not praying. That's what Samuel said. I will not commit the sin of not praying unto God. The, the thing about praying is your fellowship with the Holy Spirit, your fellowship with Jesus Christ, fellowship with the Father. It's the only place where you can have real fellowship in it. You praise the Lord, you sing unto God, you, you thank the Lord, you give unto Him the prayers, you know, as a saint of God. You're still supposed to give your prayers unto Him. And praying for other people and other things that you may need, or, or asking God to change your personality to Him, to give, give you wisdom, give you knowledge, give you understanding, give you healing, give you, um, give you gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, faith. And any, any kind of thing you're supposed to be asking for these things. Yet, because you do not persist in it, and you do not um, think this important, or you think you're, you're repeating what you prayed, you're repeating, you know, uh, the only thing that you, should, you, should, you, should, you shouldn't be repeating is things like, um, like, like, let's say, Let's say you, you ask for a bread and give me bread, give me bread, give me bread, give me bread. You, you just, you, you're not supposed to pray like that. But you're supposed to pray in a goal like a widow, like a persistent widow every day. Like, say, please save my daughter, please save my son, please save my mom. Every day you can be like the, the, the widow, the persistent widow and asking every day. Then it will be a repetition. But do not be like, you know, speaking it over and over and over and over and over, like, I need an A, I need an A, I need an A, you know, like, not like this, okay? Then that will be really, like, repetition. And, and because 
you think you just repeat it many times, God will hear you. No, it's, it's according to your, your fervency and energy that you plead. You plead unto the Lord, please, Jesus Christ, I need my father to be saved. Father, please save my father. You know, something like that. Like earnestly, every day, you spend time with God, please the Lord. Have mercy. And, and that's a goal. And if you want a certain thing, you, you ask that like persistent widow like would go go knock on the judge's door every day. Just like that, you would ask every day of whatever you need. Okay, so so in that, you know, your prayer is firstly fellowship oriented. You know, and then secondly, um, goal oriented. What what you specifically, you know, want from the Lord. So so in it, that's that's how it combines. You know, and you can pray for the world. You can pray for the peace in Israel and all that stuff. But yeah, please pray for your salvations, because you have to be saved first and and to save others. Amen. So pray pray like that, and. And I believe uh, the Lord is preparing us, you know, to have our garments ready. And if you don't know what garment you should get ready, just look up wedding garment. You know, I, I made a video on that. We have to have our garments ready, white and clean, spotless, so that in that they will be prepared. You know, with the oil of the Holy Spirit, which, which, which is, which, which is our prayer life. You know, filled with prayers. You know, so that the, our oils can be kept on burning. You know, have, have, have to have to fill with the oil of the Holy Spirit. As the ten virgins were waiting, five ran out of oil. The other five had enough oil to, to get ruptured and the others left behind. You know, and if you're left behind, you do have a second chance, but that chance is going to be very slim and you would have to face death and hell on earth in that great tribulation you'd be left behind in that god will not let the faithful ones be left behind okay he'll only let the unfaithful ones left behind if you consider yourself unfaithful to god's word you know whether you're seeking him or you know whether you're putting your attention on him if, if you seem like Okay, I have not prayed yesterday. I prayed yes the other day, but I haven't prayed yesterday, the other day. Or you, you've been skipping your prayers life and kind of been unfaithful to Him. Um, then it's higher chance that you would be left behind. Because we are to pray every day. Jesus said, pray. Like, how come you couldn't pray one hour? You couldn't keep one hour prayer? pray so you don't fall into temptation but if you're falling into temptations keep on sinning the same sins that that God's been dealing with you over and over and over then it's time to get real serious with the Lord and spend some quality time with him in the prayer closet or whatever separate yourself from the world and people around you I mean do something radical do something radical fast praying Fasting will open your spiritual eyes and keep you going. You know, do some fastings. And you can, if your health is not good, I mean, do some Daniel fasting. It wouldn't hurt your health at all. Daniel fasting, eating fruits and vegetables, water, you know, tofu, and stuff, it won't hurt your uh, physical body. It will only hurt your physical lust because you won't be able to eat meat and tasty foods. But other than that, you know, you're also growing your your um, you know, uh, control over your flesh. You're also growing that control. Because we are to control ourselves. That is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you seem to have no control over your flesh in terms of lust or whatever, you know, control you don't have, you're lacking the Holy Spirit. And we have to be born again in the Holy Spirit. I mentioned so many times, but again, we have to be born of the Holy Spirit, born again and then you will have the fruit of the Holy Spirit if you're truly born again, Christian. You would be wanting to evangelize. You'd be wanting to pray, pray, pray. You'd be wanting to seek God like you never seek, sought God before in your life. You'd be wanting these things if you're truly born again. And there are many people who are born again and lost the fire. 
of God because of many troubles in their life, many whatever came up and the devil stole your heart away. We have to start binding the demons and devils in Jesus' mighty name. This is all biblical. It's not weird. You can never be friends with devil, you know, or, or trying to ignore the devil when the devil is right around your nose. You cannot try to ignore the devil. The devil will devour your faith. He will eat the seed that is sown in your hearts if you do not fight the devil. So bind the name, bind in the name of Jesus Christ, the demons and devils, you know, and then cast them out in Jesus' my name boldly, because they will hinder you praying. They will hinder you. They'll try to bring all kinds of troubles in your in your in your face so that you give up seeking God. So don't give in to the devil's temptations and, and his wiles. Cast them out. Jesus came to cast out demons and devils and heal the sick. And, and these signs shall follow those who believe. They will what? Speak in tongues. Speak in new tongues. And they will cast out demons in my name. That's what Jesus said. And they will uh, uh, trample upon ser serpents and scorpions. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. If they drink anything deadly. Not that you should go and prove yourself. No, no, no. If you happen to drink anything deadly by persecution. You, know, you will not die if you're truly born again Christian and if God wills you to live then you will live so don't be afraid of whatever troubles just be just be vigilant so that you're in prayer and in fasting and seeking the Lord and being filled with the Holy Spirit God will not give you a serpent if you ask for a fish so for example you ask for the gift of tongues God will give you the gift of tongues he will not give you some devil tongues. Okay, like many people proclaim that, oh, what if it's devil tongues, huh? 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 Tell the devil to shut up. Because God will not give you a serpent, which is a, which is a devil, when you ask for a fish. You will get the fish. The Holy Spirit of God, you will get. If you ask for Holy Spirit gifts, you will get Holy Spirit gifts. You will not get devil gift of tongue, whatever. Does it even make sense to you? So please, um, know that when you ask in the Lord, know that you already received the answer and all you're doing is praying up for your faith to receive it. Because faith comes by hearing the word and also praying in the Spirit, it comes. So, if you don't have faith, pray, 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 pray until you break through in your prayer and get the faith to enrich your soul to receive the answer from the Lord. Amen? So, uh, I basically said all the things in, in detail, but but yeah, the Lord is coming. So prepare your garment, the wedding garment, so that you do not found, be found naked in that day or without the wedding proper wedding garment or ripped up garment or dirtied up garment. Prepare your wedding garments so that you, know, you will not be kicked out in that day when Jesus comes for, for His wedding. Because we are his bride and and we have to be ready. You know, we gotta put your makeup on, be be white as snow but clean, and redeemed in the blood of Jesus Christ, and be filled with this Holy Spirit, filled up in, in the lamp that you're preparing. Stop wasting your time in the world. It will not help you at all. Amen. So get rid of all your worldly things and lust and please let's focus in these last days as you see Egypt going crazy as you see all the Arab nations going crazy and all the Muslims trying to persecute more Christians and more Jewish people as you see these things and as you see the Temple Mount being built you know get yourself ready for the meeting of Jesus Christ because the, to die is appointed for men to die once but after that it's judgment you have to be um, you have to be judgment ready Amen? And a merciful man who, who's merciful unto other people, who, who are more merciful unto his enemies, who, did, who, are, who are forgiving unto others, will receive forgiveness and mercy, full ju judgment from, from the Lord. But who do not practice the love of God will face also a harsh judgment, which in turn will be hell. So please be aware of this. Be merciful unto others. Forgive, forgive. If you can't forgive, ask for the mind to forgive. Oh Lord Jesus, I cannot forgive this person. Please help me, Jesus, to forgive these people who've done wrong unto me. Amen?
and you have to forgive because you're not perfect you did something bad to others as well amen so forgive whatever it is whoever it is so that you be found merciful and be rewarded and also your judgment be passed with mercy amen so god bless you all uh, let's pray dear heavenly father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you father for this uh, message that you have given us father in the name of just help us to be prepared for the coming of jesus christ and uh, help us not to be deceived by the antichrist who will come to deceive many people father keep us safe and sound in your wisdom and your knowledge and do not let other people be deceived who are listening to this message father enlarge enlarge our heart to receive your word and give them understanding and father in the name of just help them to seek the spiritual gifts of the holy spirit and also be ready in the coming and on the judgment day father help us to be ready cleanse us by the blood of jesus christ forgive us as we forgive other people who sinned against us father of all our sins father in the name of jesus christ in jesus mighty name i pray glory god amen amen oh yeah